Oh, uh, the big game. What is it? Uh, the Super Bowl. I oh, can't say can't say that. Can't say that. Uh, get taken down. Okay, the big game is supposed to be happening in what uh, next week? The week after that? Don't really know. Don't really care. It's going to be the Rams and it's going to be the Bengals, right? No, the Rams are going to win. And Matthew Stafford's finally going to get his ring after years and years of suffering with the Detroit Lions. Yeah, he has a terrific team and the Bengals, great team, great team on a good run, but it's just a couple of years too early and um. The AFC is a disaster and they're going to have a long run of dominance and that's for true. But the NFL proper, they are in a bit of a flux right now. There's a whole bunch of controversy going on right now and it couldn't be happening to a better group of people. But what you have here, oh, you got some uh, dusty old broads just really mad at um, Dan Snyder. He's an easy target. Okay, he's a bit of an idiot. He's the owner of the Washington. Oh, they just got a brand new name, the Commanders. Cool. Now you can sell some more merchandise until people are telling you. And don't worry, the hit pieces are out there. Oh, Commanders is actually worse. Act actually worse than Redskins ever was. So guess what? You can get rid of that terrible, horrible name in a couple years time and um, make some more money on some fucking gullible idiots who I'm super fan. I buy all the merchandise. Sure you do, sweetheart. What are you going to do with that Washington football team gear? But now you got these dusty old broads coming out of the work or woodwork saying that, oh, Dan Snyder was lecherous and he was so mean to us. It's just fucking ridiculous. But again, the reason we're talking about this is there were a, a series of emails that were going on and there was a big investigation that the NFL was doing on the Washington Redskins at the time that led to a few people getting fired. Most notably, nobody who works for the Redskins football team, commanders, whatever the fuck. None of them actually faced any sort of repercussions, but uh, John Gruden got fired, okay? A few other people got tossed to the wayside because of that, but there are apparently hundreds of thousands of emails and pieces of communications that's out there that uh, the NFL just really doesn't want to discover or allow other people to look through. Weird on that one. So now Congress is bringing some finished old bitches who used to work for Dan Snyder to Congress to push the NFL to make that report public. Oh, life's a bitch. And then you hire six. Uh, six former employees of Washington's NFL franchise levied new allegations of sexual harassment years after their prime, years after they've been employed by the Washington team. But you know what? Hey, these are all legitimate and these are all true, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, whatever. And abuse against a team owner, Dan Snyder, Thursday, with one claiming the owner instructed the team's video department to slice or splice together a sexually suggestive video of cheerleaders experiencing exposing their private areas i'm sure that definitely happened i'm sure i'm okay again when okay if, if this boggles the mind okay and again okay exposing their private areas what is it close-ups on their crotch and their tits are they wearing uniforms at the time is this like to use this promotion for the team where it's going to intersplice cheerleaders it's like it's very context is important or is it just like explicit spank material do you want to get into details no oh okay in the roughly two hour long roundtable hearing at the house committee on oversight and reform why is again this is your tax dollars at work people former cheerleaders melanie coburn very former very former and tiffany johnston who is every bitch you've ever heard sucking a dick under the bleachers during halftime, recounted their own experiences. This is my truth with Snyder accusing the owner of ruling by fear. Is, is that true or is that just your perception of the facts? I don't know. According to Coburn, which one's that? Uh, Snyder said, oh, had the final say over who made the cheerleading squad and fired women despite their skill because they weren't the prettiest in his opinion. Y yeah, you are there to be eye candy, stupid. And again, the best skill at being, yay, go team, it's not exactly a high bar and it's not something that you can quantify from one bitch to another, okay? Do we have a proper er, smattering of blondes, brunettes, black ladies, Asians, Latinos? Good, good. Are they all wear or are they all willing to wear the uniform? Yes, great, cool. Yeah, but do any of them know how to do the splits properly? Doesn't really much matter now, does it? An NFL owner who hired and fired and employees based solely on their looks, it's despicable. You're a cheerleader. You're in the selling point of being a cheerleader is looks. Holy fuck. 
But I guess when you start to get wrinkles and more than a natural number of chins, you start to really um, get resentful of the process. Oh, but she had she uh, she had the waterworks out here, so you know that she big sad though. Coburn also recalled taking an uh, taking an awkward trip, an awards trip. Sorry. Uh, with several of her colleagues to Snyder's home in Aspen, Colorado. Oh, okay, cool. Where she alleged a co-worker was pressured to drink alcohol despite being a recovering addict. Um, okay, cool. So can you talk about, it, it, instead of hearsay, because hearsay is fun because you can just make it up because there are people that are just not there to be held accountable. And you're under oath, be sure, but you can just, you know what? I had a colleague and uh, what was her name? Uh, Tiffany, you're under oath. Oh, her name was uh, Biffany and she had to drink a uh, uh, de de so uh, de martini out of um, uh, de Dan Snyder's jock strap, and she's a recovering... Sure, she is, sweetheart. When the party returned to Snyder's house, Coburn said that she uh, was told to go to the basement and stay there. Maybe that's where your guest room was. Are you being totally um, fair and honest with this? I later learned from a colleague who was there that uh, that's because the men had institute had invited prostitutes back. Okay, cool. Um, you could have actually buried Dan Snyder on that one by saying, and then he forced himself on us. And it's like, well, there were whores there. So again, good man, Dan, even though I don't buy any of this story whatsoever, he told you guys to go to the basement, which I'm sure is just a fucking dank cellar, like um, a fucking farmhouse would have. I'm sure it wasn't just, you know, like a luxury fucking underground second home for everybody to, you know what, chill at while they were up there banging these theoretical whores. Maybe he was just auditioning some new cheerleaders. Don't know. Don't care can you provide any receipts no but you have some very tearful stories that's that's fine and these old fucking white knight simps that are on these panels they're probably like oh a woman's crying oh we just need to make it better for her can i please please just have a crumb of pussy the next day i learned when i was told a senior co-worker about dan snyder's sexual advance oh my god he he was trying to hit on an owner trying to hit on a cheerleader oh my god i can hardly believe this that i should not repeat the story to anyone outside this office door johnston recall or yeah, Johnson recalled, that was when I learned that there was no one to go to about Dan Snyder's advance, no path to report the incident. Yeah, probably because it was like, whatever. Oh, here's the allegation. He attempted to coax her into his limo until the attorney said that it was a bad idea. Okay, cool. So there was another adult there and he's like, no, she doesn't want to go. And he's like, okay, cool. And then they left. Traumatic situation. But this is what, um, catches the eye of Congress. Not, not like a local Congress, not like, um the name of a restaurant this is the united states house of um, whatever interaction and overreach johnson also accused snyder of requesting a photo of her from a lingerie cat calendar photo shoot before her private areas could be retouched he asked for a negative okay and again it was from a photo shoot that you willingly did you fucking brainlet oh my god this doesn't look good for you but you cried so that makes everything better Brad Baker, a former video production manager for the team, then known as the Washington Very Racist, Very Redskins, then, re er, then rebranded the Washington football team. So they were then known as the Washington Redskins, then the Washington... Oh, okay, cool. Now followed by the Washington Commanders and then by the Guardians in the future. I don't know. Uh, recalled Snyder ordering employees in 2008. Very relevant. Uh, to edit cheerleader uh, calendar photo shoot footage to create a good bits video featuring nude images of the women. Okay, if there was photo shoot footage, let's just try to workshop this idea out because boy, this is really retarded. Wouldn't they all just, if, if this was for the purpose of a fucking calendar, I don't think that they're selling official NFL merchandise with tits and bush out. I don't think that's happening, okay? So they would have to alter some pictures. While it is theoretically creepy, it's not the actual girl's tits and box. It's What are you doing here, dude? And again, this was in 2008. If he was working for the team for a long time, wouldn't this be like a yearly occurrence thing? And wouldn't you think that, boy, that's kind of weird that he would want me to do this year after year, but why would you just pick 2008 out of that specific year? Maybe you were there and you did a shit job and you got fired and you're still holding a grudge some 14 years later? Could be, or maybe that was just a specifically good year of crop of cheerleaders for the Redskins. 
Don't know. Well, passing through the editing suite, I saw several images on both the editing monitor and the monitor of our tape deck that featured the cheerleaders posing for their photo shoot. Okay, cool. Again, did he work on it specifically or was this just one of those, I thought I seen a thing and I heard somebody say something. But it was like outtakes and their breasts and pu or pubic areas were exposed. <gasps> oh my God, I seen something maybe on somebody else's computer. Sure, but again, we could just keep going down this in painstaking fashion. But as you can see, um, these are the women who are down there. Former cheerleader and market and director of marketing, Melanie Coburn. Maybe you're really bad at that, uh, especially the Washington Redskins. Yeah, they had really bad marketing, so you were probably fired and definitely not jilted, of course. Anna Nunez, a former business development coordinator for the Washington Command. Oh yeah. So all of these, do, do any of these women actually work there or are they all form a former marketing coordinator? Emily Applegate testifies to the toxic workplace in the Washington commanders. So is any of this shit like actually illegal former marketing and events court? Wow. A lot of former marketing. It's almost like that's a very transient position. Hmm. Weird. But yeah, no, um, all, you, you can't find work anymore and you're all fucking finished when it comes to being in front of the camera. So now you just want to get yours. I understand. Speaking of which, something else uh, equally as stupid that's going on right now. And I would just love to talk about, but I did miss the boat on this one. There was a lot of shit going on that day, but Tom, B Tom Brady retiring. Okay. Like, that's big news, okay? And why he would do that before the Super Bowl is just a final fuck you to the Rams. It's like, how hey, you guys couldn't score a touchdown on us and we beat your um, beat the brakes off you. And he made a career out of just making the Cincinnati Bengals look like the Bungles every time. But why he'd do that, I, I, that's Tom Brady, okay? And 22 years, seven championships. I still think Joe Montana's better. He was undefeated in the Super Bowl. But whatever, okay, to take it for what you want. Probably one of the number one or number two greatest quarterbacks uh, seems to be a really good person okay the really stable family man okay he makes one of the world's most successful supermodels his bitch congratulations you're winning at life and now you have more time to do that i have nothing but great things to say about him and hopefully he does well in the future but outside of that that's the good stuff that's going on right now but oh he he slighted the patriots in his announcement that he's retiring from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it would be a little bit inappropriate to say that, oh yeah, I'm leaving the Tampa Bay t er, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, a year early. Sorry, I have that extra year on my contract, but I'd like to thank the Patriots. Wait, what? No, it should be specifically about the team that you're leaving, but he, he, whatever, recut or somebody. I don't think it was necessarily Tom at the computer splicing together his greatest hits from the Patriots, but yeah, he released a video and now it's all cool and copacetic and everybody's fine with that, but there's somebody who didn't, unfortunately, get to go out on top and that's uh brian flores who took a really talented roster on a really um transit or er, transitional division the afc east the same division of the patriots okay and he managed to muddle fuck his way through uh, uh, a head coach position that was really easy he had a stacked roster he had opportunities to make inroads and you sucked Okay, and you seem to not be a very good interview, but you know what? Instead of placing any of the blame on yourself, instead of looking around the league and realizing that, hmm, actually, uh, there are some uh, head coaches out there that uh, aren't just these old, angry white men who, you know, it didn't definitely work their way up through the system. Um, like uh, Mike Tomlin's over there going like, what the fuck? Who am I? Who the fuck am I? Now, Brian Flores, former coach of the Miami Dolphins says, God damn it. It's all about racism in miami florida all right uh d didn't you see that there is like a, after don shula okay uh, there's a literal revolving door in miami okay there's almost been as many head coaches as starting quarterbacks for this franchise and you think that what they should have stuck around you because you muddle fucked your way through a season sucks to suck dude but no, uh, now you spark the ire of Stephen Ross, who doesn't necessarily have the greatest reputation, but then at the same time, like this just was going on long before this controversy even pe er, picked up anyways, because he just hasn't been that stable of an owner. But he hit back as much as a geriatric can do. That former coach over racial discrimination lawsuit. Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross responded to a lawsuit from former Miami head coach Brian Flores, who was suing the Dolphins, New York Giants, and the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos. Claiming he experienced racism during the team's hiring process. He experienced racism with a team that he accepted a job for. Good job. Wait, really bolster your claim there, stupid. 
Uh, Flores was uh, fired after the 2021-2022 season by the Dolphins after three seasons, sued the teams earlier this week. In particular, he accused Ross of incentivizing him to lose games during the 2019-2022 uh, season, that should be 19-20 season, uh, to get better draft picks, offering to pay him $100,000 per loss, Ross said in a statement, denied Flores's allegations. That would be really fucked and interesting, but um, can you provide any receipts? Nope, nope. According to the section of the lawsuit, Loris, er, Flores' lawyers allege that Flores was ultimately terminated and subsequently defamed throughout the media. What? No, he's, he's, he's doing this with these b ridiculous lawsuits. Which again, if he said that he was paid to tank, I don't think being black has anything to do with this. Just strange, just very strange. And the league, uh, as he was labeled by the Dolphins brass as someone who's difficult to work with. This is a guy who's suing three major football teams while claiming there was a racist undertone. I'm sure there was, Precious. But Ross, 81. 81, huh? Actually, doesn't look that bad for 81. Looks like Yogi Berra. I uh, said that he takes great personal exception to these malicious attacks in a lawsuit. Well, his lawyers would have written that for him. With regards to the allegations being made by Brian Flores, I'm a man of honor and integrity and cannot let them stand without responding. No, you could probably just respond. That, that's fine. But I'd imagine that's probably the response from his legal team, so that's fine. In his statement, I take great personal exception to these malicious attacks and the truth must be known. Yeah, I don't pay my head coach to lose games. That's kind of counterproductive to owning a team. You kind of want to be successful, dude. Even though you could argue that there's more money to be made to get to the Super Bowl and then losing it so you don't have to pay out everybody's incentives and bonuses and championship rings because that shit's expensive. But regardless, okay, the, the, the Dolphins were nowhere close to that, but mostly because of their dysfunction in your revolving door. Uh, Flores was fired after three seasons uh, where his team went 24 and 25 and failed to make the playoffs in each of those three years. That's not a very good record. After three years, a lot of coaches get fired with a sub 500 record. You're not special. And you know what? You could have got a coordinator's, or coordinator's job, okay? But no, you just got to burn every bridge that's out there. Or maybe you were actually hard to work with and people were like, oh, okay, cool. We can see that he's a bit of a sped on the sidelines and we aren't going to offer him any future work because we don't want that headache either. Maybe that's what the Giants and the Broncos were thinking. But what, were, what was the Broncos' response to this? Well... Broncos legend and team president, John Elway, who's based on his quarterback decisions, this motherfucker is bound and determined to be the greatest quarterback in Denver Broncos history, the most successful player in its existence, based on his decision-making capabilities, okay? But regardless, but regardless, denies being hungover at Brian Flores' 2019 job interview and rejects fired Dolphins coaches claim that the meeting was a sham. No, clearly you got hired by another team, so obviously they were interested in you. You uh, <laughs> dude's an absolute spurg. Broncos president and a legendary NFL quarterback, John Elway, denies being hung over at Brian Flores' 2019 job interview and is refuting Flores' claims uh, that the meeting was a sham only conducted to satisfy the league's Rooney rule, which is just racist diversity hire nonsense, by the way. If you are if, if you're not familiar with the Rooney rule, it was set up by, was it the founder of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, the, one of the owners, Art Rooney, because he thought that it would be a great idea that you need to have and you need to interview at least one minority candidate for every position that's out there. It's it's totally ridiculous. It's exactly how Joe Biden's running his Supreme Court nominee picking. But regardless, um, at the time of the Rooney rule being put in place, um, wasn't the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, coaching staff looking awfully white? But whatever, but whatever. Rules for thee, not for me, and uh, to be abused uh, when necessary, I guess. Oh, while I was not planning to respond publicly to the false and defamatory claims by Brian Flores, let me just uh, do exactly the opposite of that. I could not be silent any longer with my character, integrity, and professionalism being attacked. Oh, I could see um, Elway and Ross using the same legal team. Flores reached, uh, recently fired as head coach in Miami, named the Dolphins, Giants, and Broncos in a lawsuit this week, uh, alleging unfair and discriminatory hiring practices in the NFL. Flores said in a lawsuit that Elway, then the team's general manager, thankfully he's fucking stepped away from that job, and president CEO Joe Ellis uh, showed up an hour late for his interview at a Providence, Rhode Island hotel. 
Well, to be fair, you gotta be fashionably late, and, you know, it probably takes a lot of effort to lug that old fucking dome around, so. Could have been an hour late, could have been 45 minutes late, but then you're lying in your lawsuit. And they looked completely disheveled. Hey, come on, when you took as many hits in the NFL as Elway did, he's gonna look like that all the time. And it was obvious that they had been drinking heavily the night before. No. Why would you sue over that? That's ridiculous. Uh, Elway responded to the serious, uh, Oh, oh, that he was seriously considered Flores, but not anymore. One of five candidates for the job that ultimately went to their uh, then Bears uh, defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio. Yeah, and in 2019, the Bears had a really good, uh, really good defense, so that totally makes sense. Uh, he then denied Flores' contention. He was hungover and just going through the motions to satisfy the league's requirements that teams interview minority candidates for head coaching jobs. Yeah, because if he was just going through the motions on that, one way to satisfy the Rooney rule, at least at the time, this could have been the case, all you needed to do is just conduct a phone interview. So if they weren't seriously considering you, they wouldn't have invited you to Providence, Rhode Island Hotel, and they wouldn't have probably paid your bill in order to get there and set up a face-to-face -face interview, which you're also not saying if that was the first, second, third, or fourth interview. Just wondering, though, just wondering... For Brian to make an assumption about my appearance and my state of mind early that morning was subjective, hurtful, and just plain wrong, Elway's lawyers wrote for him. But there's another team that's uh, implicated on this one, okay? And I know we've just been hearing from a bunch of old white men, so what do they know on this, okay? What if, what if they're just all racist? This is just, The NFL is just a great big white supremacist organization, so how about we hear from a, a New York Giants legend, okay? A New York Giants legend who's not necessarily necessarily um in the best uh or rather on the best terms with the team that uh, he played for throughout his entire career who was one of the biggest stars for that team okay and unfortunately that retired just a couple of years before they beat the undefeated patriots in the super bowl you got tiki barber here who as you can see i uh, did just you know another one of those old white men well, he's defending the team and the ownership there and uh, calling Brian Flores a fucking retard. In nicer words, though. Former Giants star T. Barber is frustrated over allegations of racism against the team in a new class action lawsuit filed by the former Dolphins coach Brian Flores class action because he has multiple different names in the lawsuit. Arbor became choked up on Wednesday while uh, defending the Mara family, which, or yeah, who co-owns the Giants with Steve Tisch, a saying he believes neither family is racist. Yeah, it really doesn't happen in, it, once you get to a certain level. Oh my God. Like there's a lot of people who think that the, oh my God, all of these CEOs are just sociopaths. They're just psychopaths. Yeah, people who are sociopaths and uh, psychopaths, okay, um, they don't make it very far. Sure, they can be successful for a little while, but eventually their neuroses, their mental deficiencies get the better of them, and they don't achieve lasting success like the guys who would be running a fucking successful, incredibly expensive franchise. I think on Forbes's top 10 or rather, Forbes' most expensive uh, professional sports teams, okay? The Giants is right up there. It's right close to the top, if not in the top 10, top 25 in all of professional sports. Do you really think an out-and-out -out racist, okay, somebody who just uh, is out there just hating on black people would own an NFL team? <sighs> It's you know, fucking patently absurd. Back to the Maras, and I always say this uh, with the Tishes as well. They embraced me like I was their family. You know what I mean? And so I know them intimately. So when I say uh, that I don't believe that they're racist, I know they're not. Barber told Brandon Tierney on WFAN, uh, Tiki and Tierney. That sounds terrible. But Tiki Barber's a good talker, so I'd imagine it's probably at least somewhat entertaining. Yeah, maybe they don't have the right head coach that's based. Uh, the black head coach. Wait, what? Oh, maybe uh, specifically talking about uh, Flores' claim. They don't have a black general manager or a black coordinator. I know they're not a racist organization. Yeah. They also don't have an Asian general manager or an Asian coordinator or a Mexican in certain position there. They don't have a lot of things, but what they do have is theoretically competent people, okay? Or they just get rid of them. And if Brian Flores was in this position for 2019 through 2022, given the people that he has there, would he done any? Would he have done any better? Survey says with a more talented team and a more favorable 
division? Looks like you wouldn't have. The NFC East is a fucking joke of a conference. So is the AFC East. Now, with the exception of 2019, that was the case over there. And we've seen what he did. He wasn't all that inspiring when the Dolphins were expected to take a big leap forward. Barber's emotional plea with the Mara family came after a listener named Dwayne from uh, Piscataway. It's one of those fucking weirdos from Long Island, I'd imagine, Staten Island, somewhere, uh, called in asking Barber, uh, minimizing the situation between Flores and the Giants. No, because there's nothing to really talk about, weirdo. And come on, does that look like a guy who wouldn't pull the race card at any given moment? Let's just wrap this up because this is just so patently absurd. Uh, the former running back, uh, 46 years old. Damn. Like, I gave big ups to the Dolphins owner for looking the, like, pretty decent at um, 81, but Tiki doesn't look 46. I bet you could still play. I went on to recall the time when the Mar family called him personally to say goodbye to Wellington before he died in October 2005. Barber said he went to his be er, bedside in his room in uh, Manchester, New York, surrounded by family, and then told Mara, thank you for making me a giant. Barber also explained on his radio show Wednesday, so far, oh, so far, the four, sorry, a uh, Dwayne to try to boil me into saying something that's not true. It's frustrating because you know my truth, my truth, and you don't know my interactions with the giant organization. And to force me because I have this seat to do so is just wrong and it's frustrating. Yeah, you should have tried that with a uh, Shannon Sharp because he was a former Bronco, so you could probably get him to say something because that dude's a race baiter extraordinaire, but. Not with Tiki, and not somebody so intimately intertwined with the with the Giants. I don't know if you have a baggie of uh, certain white stuff, you might get Lawrence Taylor to say some stuff, but whatever. And it's creating an emotional or an emotion in me that's not anger, and I can't even put my voice on it yet. But it's frustrating for me that the Giants are getting this rep because I don't think that's the case. Nobody does. This dude's just making the rounds right now, and of course, of course, woke sports media right now, ESPN, uh, Fox Sports News, all of those fucking 30-minute back-and-forth pitter-patter talk shows. Oh, Brian Flores is saying the NFL's racist. Oh my god, tell me more ratings, ratings, ratings. Nobody believes that this is just another one of those, I'm gonna try to get mine after I, you know, it flamed out as being a head coach. Listen, it happens, okay? There's more failures of being a head coach than there are Bill Belichick's than there are Sean Payton's out there. Guys who are gonna be able to call their shots and retire when they want to. Guys who are successful regardless of the team around them, okay? Just wasn't your time dude you might have come back you might have learned some stuff you're still a young dude but your future in the nfl is looking awfully fucking bleak and stop looking at me like that because i feel like i'm going to be getting a cease and desist letter in the mail here shortly if i don't but with that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone